Does that have to be right there? Could be written somewhere else. So let's do that. And what do you see now? In this, in the red. Double angle for what? Sine. Sine. Would you guys agree? Yeah. You have a sine two x. So you have one minus two. What is the formula for a uh, double angle for sine two x? That is being squared. No, we don't have to. We don't have to foil or factor any of this. We're just going to square everything that's in the parentheses. So when we square two, we get four. When we square sine x, we're going to get. And when we square cosine, we're going to get. And the last thing we'll have to do is distribute the two. So what is the value of b? how you alter uh, your different forms, your different uh, double angle identities to, to match what they give you. So let's just recap this one. You start out with a cosine four x. That looks very similar to our double angle identity, cosine two x. The only difference was it was a four, which means we had to replace that original x with the two x to make it a four x. Does everybody see that? So just like the other problem, wherever we saw an x in the original double angle identity, we're going to, we, were, we plugged in a 2x. And the reason why we used 1 minus sine squared x is because of the form that they wanted us to write it in. So, we did that, we plugged in the 2x, we moved the exponent up, or we changed positions, which you can do, you can't have it in front, or you can't have it behind. By moving behind, we were able to see that we had our double angle identity, which we replaced, then we squared, and then we multiply to find b. So now you guys are going to practice doing this. Okay, that's what the whiteboards are for. So let's take a look at. Too easy. That's too easy. Let's look at this one. Okay. So use an appropriate double angle formula to simplify. So in other words, this can be written as one of our double angle formulas. Just alter it a little bit. So I want you to give me what is that double angle formula that would give me a 2 sine 2a cosine a. To start our figure out which one of our double angles looks like this. The sine one. Sine 2x equals what? Normally. How were they altered? How were these x's changed? Two, not just the two, but also in, in a. So basically, we substitute in a 2a for every x. So then this becomes sine of 4a. See how that works? Now those other problems basically kind of told you what form they want you to write it in, which they could do, because they wanted you to figure out what was this very, what was this number right here, okay? But do you realize that you don't even need to know that, oh, I'm looking for the four. You can actually decipher that from the original to get here. Wait, so when you're doing it, you don't use the identity, you use the original, you sign two X and then plug backwards. Yeah, just this part, the formula kind of tells you which one of your double angle identities you need to use, and then how to alter that. So, are we going to give them the altered one, or are we going to give them the original one? So, we're going to sign for it. You're going to give them sign for it. All right, let's look at another one. All right, you guys are all on the right track. The double angle identity we're looking at is cosine. Wow. 2x, right? But the issue is, is the the double angle identity for cosine 2x is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And this one is a little bit 
completely different. No, it's not, not Pythagorean. It's still this one. The only difference is how can I make it so that my 1 is positive and my 2 cosine squared x is negative? How can I, how can I make it that way? The identity is positive. Make the cosine 2x negative, right? Yeah. So then when you negate the whole thing. John Perkins, you're needed in the front office. John Perkins, please report to the front office. And then from there, you can see that what, did, what am I going to plug in for x? 3b. So this is actually going to be a negative cosine 2 times 3b. So a negative cosine 6b. It wasn't negative. 